Every console has its mascot. It's hard to think of Nintendo without instantly calling to mind that famous mustachioed plumber Mario. When you hear that synth voice, SEGA, in your head, who is most likely to pop up on the screen next but Sonic the Hedgehog? Even in the modern console era, the Xbox has its Master Chief, PlayStation has Crash Bandicoot, although he's probably been overtaken by Nathan Drake from the Uncharted series, so I gather. Well, the 1980s British home computer market was no different. The ZX Spectrum had Miner Willy, protagonist of the hugely popular Manic Miner and Jet Set Willy games. The Dragon 32 had Cuthbert, and the Amstrad CPC had Dizzy. But what about the BBC Micro? Well, in my opinion, that accolade must surely go to this guy, Repton. Repton was the invention of then 16-year-old Tim Tyler, who made the eponymous Lizard Man the star of the game that bears his name. Since its release in 1985, Repton would go on to appear in Repton 2, also by Tyler, and then in Repton 3, where the developer reins were passed to Matthew Atkinson. Repton 3 was, in my opinion, the high watermark of the Repton series, as it would form the basis of further level expansions, including the life of Repton and around the world in 40 screens, both in 1987, then Repton through time in 1988, and finally, well at least for the Beeb, Repton Infinity, also in 1988, but this time developed by David Lawrence and David Acton. Indeed, such was the popularity of Superior Software's Repton that he continued to show up in other games beyond the BBC Micro. Repton 4, coded by that rock star Beeb developer Gary Partis, was released in 1989 for the Archimedes. Even in the 2000s and 2010s, courtesy of Superior Interactive, Repton has made the leap to the PC, iOS and Android platforms. The fundamental recipe of Repton's success has remained the same. While the game may owe some of its inspiration to Boulder Dash, what sets Repton apart is its calmer, more relaxed approach to problem solving. Unlike Boulder Dash and many other scrolling maze games, Repton does not rely on fast reflexes or pixel-perfect manoeuvres. Instead, it puts the puzzle solving at the very heart of each level, giving you time to figure things out and determine the best path. Above all though, Repton gave the Beeb its mascot and it's why I've waited until now to bring any of the Repton games into the countdown. I've actually decided that this entry at number 3 should be devoted to a review of Repton as a whole, at least as far as his existence on the Beeb is concerned. Tim Tyler's original Repton sowed the seed, but then Matthew Atkinson took the game to new heights, giving it a level designer, which then paved the road for all of the Repton games to come. So, in true Repton fashion, I am also going to take a calm and reflective look at each of the Repton entries for the BBC Micro and take you on a journey. The life of Repton through time, if you will. Okay, so let's take things back to where it all began, uh, namely Tim Tyler's original Repton. So this game uh, is level based, um, so you have to complete each level in order to make it through to the next one, and you get passwords, so each time you finish a level you have a password that will let you skip ahead to the next level, which gives you um, a, a chance of being able to make your way through the games. Now one of the first things you should always do is have a look at the map, which I'm doing here, which gives you an idea of the layout of the level, um, and hopefully will guide you to the best path to collect all of the diamonds. Now, Repton, um, not unique, but certainly special amongst Beeb games, uh, actually has got background music, which is rather excellent. Um, so you can see here that I am basically making my way through the level as quickly as I can uh, to collect all of the diamonds and hopefully try and not box myself in. Uh, that is one of the, uh, the great perils of Repton, even on an easy level like this one where there aren't any other obstacles besides the boulders. If you do take a wrong path, uh, you run the risk of basically trapping yourself or alternatively um, trapping the diamonds and thereby making it impossible um, to complete the level, at which point you have to essentially commit suicide and start all over again. That's why those passwords are all important, because uh, as you progress through the game and you get to the later levels, um, you really do need to practice time and time again uh, to see if you can work out uh, the right path, and then once you've got the hang of it, obviously you can... Uh, give it a playthrough in, in one go. Uh, but I do like the level-based approach. Um, I like the fact that Repton has this first fairly straightforward level just to, to help you um, 
kind of feel feel the ropes and get used to the game. And you can see here that there's a lot of earth on this level, so the earth uh, Repton can just pass through it, um, as you can see here. And once he's passed through it, the earth disappears. Uh, but the earth also does things like hold the boulders in position. Um, so if you move the earth underneath a boulder, obviously it can cause the boulder to uh, fall, depending on where the boulder is. Uh, diamonds can also um, cause boulders to stay in position, but if you collect diamonds that are either beside or underneath a boulder, uh, that can cause the boulder to shift. Um, and what you obviously want to avoid is it shifting and falling on your head, uh, because that is, uh, that's curtains for Repton at that point. Now you have a few lives, but uh, in general, um, on this level in particular, if you do end up dying because of a boulder falling on your head, uh, it may well mean that you've actually taken the wrong path. But uh, I've managed to complete that level there, and you can see the password Chameleon showed up on the screen, and that takes us to a, a new level. And this one is nice blue, um, blue colour scheme, for replacing the red, and that's one of the other features of Repton. It does a certain amount of palette switching from one level to the next, just helps to keep the graphics looking fresh, which I particularly like. It's a very smooth, fluid game. There's a slight amount of flicker, as you can see, but to be honest, um, as we'll see when we get to uh, Repton Infinity later, um, having a little bit of flicker is certainly preferable to smooth but slow movement. Um, the game is really nippy here. It really does move, uh, and uh, I personally think that, that that really helps. Now, you uh, see these eggs here. Um, if, you, if you cause the egg to fall, uh, it will hatch and uh, a little gremlin pops out and the only way you can get rid of the gremlins is to uh, squish them with boulders. It's particularly satisfying, I have to say. Uh, right, I just need to work out how to get this diamond without trapping myself. There we go. Um, now, if I go to the left, I think... Hmm, I do like this little pause effect, by the way, with Repton. If you, if you leave him sort of standing for um, more than a few seconds, he does this little dance. Like he's a nervous dance, like a toilet dance, waiting for you to uh, to interact with him. But uh, yes, as I was saying, you you can kill the gremlins by squishing them with boulders, which is great fun. Um, but uh, you do need to make sure you've got a boulder to hand in order to be able to do that. Uh, now this level is a little bit trickier, obviously, with the introduction of the gremlins. That being one of the uh, one of the things that makes it a bit trickier. But also the layout of the level is a, that much more tricky than uh, level one. Um, so you do have to watch what you're doing in order to, to make it through. Um, but yes, this this is essentially the, the gameplay of Repton 1. So the, the main obstacles in Repton 1 are, as I said before, the boulders. Uh, you've got those eggs to, to worry about. Um, but that's essentially it. So um, each level is a variation on, of, on a theme, so to speak. Uh, and the aim is to... Oh dear, I should uh, kill myself there. Well done me. Um, but yes, the aim of the of the level, as I say, is to you know check your map as I'm doing here, work out where all the diamonds are, and once you've collected the last diamond, um, the level is automatically uh, finished. Um, now that's something that changes in some of the later versions of Repton, but uh, in this version, uh, the original, um, all you need to do is make sure you can make it to the last diamond, and indeed that could be any diamond on the level. Um, so you don't have to make sure that you uh, collect a particular diamond. As so long as you've collected all of them, that is the end of the level. Uh, now, I'm not sure whether I'm going to be able to complete this one because I have a feeling that I might have boxed in one or two of the diamonds with uh, with my with my movement of the various boulders. So uh, we might be drawing to a close here for Repton 1. Well, yes, you see, this diamond is well and truly trapped, so I'm not going to be able to collect that one. Uh, but yes, there you go. That is Repton 1. Okay, so next we're going to have a look at Repton 2. Now this was to be Tim Tyler's final instalment in the Repton series, and he attempted to create something vastly more complex than the original Repton. I do love that speech, by the way. I'm definitely going to have to make a video all about speech on the BBC Micro. I have fond, fond memories of it. But anyway, back to Repton 2. So yes, Tim uh, tried to do something a bit different this time around. So you'll recall that with Repton 1, uh, you basically complete a level, you get a password, and then you move on to the next level. Um, Repton 2 is not like that. Repton 2 is one giant level, to, to put it in all intents and purposes. So what you have to do here is essentially navigate a vast, complex array of different areas which you can access through the teleporters, which you saw me using just now. Um, and basically, you've got to complete the whole game in one sitting. Now, that 
is very, very hard. And to make it even harder, it's not just a case of collecting all of the diamonds. On top of that, you've also got to collect all of the earth squares as well, and you've also got to use every teleporter. So not only do you need to know which sequence to use the teleporters in, but you've also got to make sure you use all of them. And some of those teleporters will take you to pretty much dead ends um, if you haven't collected the relevant keys or released the sprites or, or what have you. Now, this version of Repton, uh, while it was Tim's last, he introduced a couple of extra mechanics that were to crop up again and again in future Repton games. Now, we already had uh, the uh, the bad guys, the gremlins, sealed in eggs, although the sprites for them have changed a little bit here, as you can see. Um, this is the version of the gremlin, by the way, that I, I like the most. It changes quite a few times throughout the Repton series, but I, I love this one. It just... It just looks so weird. But um, anyway, yes, this was already uh, present, um, albeit with different graphics, in the uh, the first Repton game. But uh, Tim also introduced the concept of the sprites. Uh, you may have noticed a sprite earlier on um, when I was uh, playing just as we started. Um, the sprites are little flying critters, basically, that you have to release. Um, they're usually locked in a portion of the game. Uh, and then you have to release them. And oh, there's one there, you see and you have to guide it uh, to a cage. And if you can get it to the cage without it hitting you, uh, well, well done me, uh, you uh, will find that the sprite turns into a diamond, which you have to collect. So sprites and the diamonds that they turn into are part of the overall... Um, there's a cage there, by the way, that was, I was meant to guide that sprite to. So, uh, yes, the the, um, the diamonds that the sprites turn into are another um, one of the diamonds that you have to collect. Now those evil looking heads, by the way, that uh, you may have noticed, those skulls, that's another one of the things that Tim introduced into the game. They're essentially um, deadly squares, so you can't cross them. If you walk into them, uh, it kills you. Uh, you might think, well, that's not much of an obstacle, but believe me, if you're moving around Repton, especially if the time's running out and you, um, they, there's one of those positioned just slightly above of where you want to go, they can be a real pain. Right, let's see if we can get this sprite into the cage here just to demonstrate the principle. Oh, he's gone off over there now. Brilliant. Oh, well, that wasn't very good, was it? Anyway, we'll squish this uh, gremlin and... Oh, funny happened there. There we go. Squashed him. Uh, now, I don't know where that sprite's gone. Um, he's got... Oh, there he is. I'm going to come out of here, though, because he'll probably nab me. Uh, now, these bits of jigsaw, by the way, that I'm collecting, that's another aspect of Repton 2. I don't think that came back in future Repton series, but um, it basically spells out Repton 2 is ended, and you have to collect all of the jigsaw puzzles, as well as all of the diamonds and all of the earth squares. So there really is a lot to do in Repton 2, and I think because it is that much harder um, than both Repton and, indeed, Repton 3, uh, which came after it, I didn't play Repton 2 as much. Um, I've heard rumours that there was a bug in the original release of Repton 2, actually, where there was uh, one diamond that wasn't... There you go, there's a sprite going into a cage there. Uh, there was one diamond uh, that you were supposed to collect which wasn't actually on the map, and so you could never actually complete the game. I don't think I had that version of Repton 2 back in the day. I think I had one that had, had that bug removed. But nevertheless, bugs or not, uh, Repton 2 was um, great in terms of the scope and the scale that Tim was trying to achieve. Um, but probably not my favourite of the Repton series. That is Repton 3, which is what we're going to look at next. So now we come to Repton 3, uh, where the reins were handed over to Matthew Atkinson, as I mentioned in the introduction. Now Repton 3 is split into three chunks. Uh, each chunk can be loaded separately and has its own set of maps, uh, which makes the game um, much bigger than uh, previous Reptons. Lovely bit of speech again. I, I really love Superior Software speech. I know I said it uh, just now, but I, I really do. And that splash screen, by the way, is the archetypal splash screen for me when it comes to Repton. In fact, Repton 3, I really think, is the best of, of the Reptons. Um, we've still got quite a few more to look at, but I think this was the first Repton I actually played. I played it uh, on a Play It Again Sam 2 compilation, as I recall, uh, which I had borrowed from uh, my friend Simon, who um, also had a BBC Micro when we were both growing up. And uh, yeah, this was the, the first, I know not the first in the series, but definitely the first uh, Repton that I played. And it's also why I can complete this first map with my eyes closed, pretty much. Um, I, I think I must have completed map A of uh, Prelude of Repton 3 more times than any other Repton level. Um, and even now, I mean, I, I'm literally just playing it on instinct at the moment because I... I don't really need to think all that much about it. I'm not showing off. Um, I'm, I'm pretty rubbish at the other levels. <laughs> but this level, yeah, I'm a pretty pretty much a dab hand at it. But um, 
Yeah, why is Repton 3 the best? Well, I think it brings together um, a lot of the mechanics. It introduces a few extra ones as well, um, but it builds on what Tim produced in the first two uh, Reptons. There's those sprites again down there. We're going to release those and let them into the, into the cages above. And uh, the other thing that really makes it stand out, which we'll be taking a look at, is the editor. The eagle-eyed amongst you will have noticed uh, on the splash screen that in addition to playing the game, you have an option to enter the editor. And I shall be taking a look at that uh, after I complete this map. But in short, the combination of the mechanics that are introduced in Repton 3 and the editor, um, it just opened up a whole world of Repton possibilities. Um, not just for the developers, but for people like you and me um, to really play around and experiment with, uh, with what was possible with Repton. And I just think that the, the game is at its, at its peak here. It's smooth, it's really, really good fun to play. Um, the graphics are excellent. I like the music. This is my favorite of the Repton tunes. Um, it's actually a specifically composed for Repton tune rather than, a, um, a, 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 if you like, an, an adaptation of a, of a bit of jazz music, which I think is what we've seen in some of the previous Repton installments. And it just plays really, really well. And the levels are really well constructed. I really like what Matthew's done here. Um, this as a sort of opener. It's not too simple. Um, it's not like the first uh, level, for example, of Repton 1, which really is quite straightforward and there's not a lot of threat involved. And actually it introduces you to all of the, the new mechanics of Repton 3. You'll notice there's a time bomb there. Um, that is where you have to get to in order to complete the level. So it's not just a case of collecting all of the diamonds. Now you have to make sure that in addition to collecting the diamonds, you make it to the time bomb um, and, and so-called diffuse the time bomb in order to complete the map. And that's uh, that's the, the spirit of Repton 3. Um, you also have crowns here as well. You have to collect the crowns, not just the diamonds. So it's just another little extra challenge introduced into the game. And uh, yeah, overall, uh, I can't speak more highly enough. I mean, I think if I'm being honest, Repton's place in uh, number three in the countdown is largely down to Repton 3 uh, itself. It's just like coincidence there, but it's true. I think uh, Repton 3 is, is the best. Um, it's a really, really good game. The character of Repton really comes into his own here. Um, and uh, yeah, I think Matthew just did an absolutely first-rate job with it. So, having completed that first map, um, I'm now going to go and have a quick uh, play around with the editor just to show you what that's all about. Um, so you can see here option two, the editor. Now the editor is, is it's really powerful. Um, it lets you control all of the different uh, graphics of the game. Um, you can create your own maps. Um, really, the possibilities are, are as endless as your imagination. So, for example, if we, we can load up the Repton um, well, one of the Repton uh, frames for the Repton sprite, and you know, can change his eye color, make him look a little bit sleepy here. This is probably more more my sort of speed. There you go, slightly less uh, less alert looking Repton there. Give him a blue mouth as well. Um, but I mean, that's obviously a very basic tweak. Um, you know, you could really get experimental here. Uh, for example, this this skull, I always think he looks a bit sinister, and it would actually be a lot more fun. Um, if we uh, if we gave him a moustache and a pair of glasses and just cheered him up a little bit because you know he looks a bit he looks a bit frowny so we're gonna just uh, yeah just clear out all of this and uh, yeah we go give him some nice bright blue eyes pair of specs nice twiddly moustache down there and yeah he just looks a bit more looks a bit more friendly I suppose he shouldn't really look friendly because it does kill you if you walk into it. Um, but yeah, in addition to that, you, as I say, you can build your own maps as well with the editor um, using all of the, uh, the the graphics here. You can pop your Repton over here. I'll pop a few of these diamonds here. And then you save it um, with whatever file name you like. And this now functions in the same way as uh, the, the so-called out-of-the-box chunks of Repton. You can load them up and uh, it'll go straight into your very own map. And I mean, that's... That's just wonderful. I mean, we saw something similar with uh, System Wajbury earlier in the series, but games that come with their own editor like this, I just think take it to the to the next level. Quite literally, your very own levels. So there we are, Repton 3. Um, but that's not where it ends. We've got more to look at. So now we come to Around the World in 40 Screens. Uh, this one was also developed by Matthew Atkinson, and it's the first in the Repton series of themed Reptons. 
So essentially building on um, the power of the, the Repton editor, which was introduced in Repton 3, along with a few tweaks to some of the algorithms, um, this is uh, basically a great demonstration of just how far you can take it if you really want to um, experiment with that editor. So this is split into different geographies. Uh, this is uh, the Wild West here. So this is Repton uh, reimagined as a cowboy. You can see him sort of wandering around uh, the Wild West here. And, and basically everything has been changed. Um, he collects hamburgers now <laughs> instead of diamonds. Um, we've still got the safes there, actually, which have to be unlocked. But that's in keeping with the sort of Wild West uh, idea. Um, you've also got that gun there, which um, is, well, basically that's how you unlock the safes. Because uh, I think the idea is that you have the gun in order to um, hold up the bank. <laughs> So uh, that's why you need your gun. Obviously, you need to avoid the hangman's noose because you're a, you're a bit of an outlaw. What I love, though, is the, is the idea that inside these safes is a bunch of hamburgers. Um, no, no, <laughs> we're not looking at gold here. Are they, well, actually, they might be hot dogs now I think about it. Are they hot dogs or are they hamburgers? Well, one of the two, some sort of fast food. Um, but yes, uh, this is the, the first of the, uh, the themed versions, but around the world in 40 screens, as the name would suggest, um, has many other geographies to explore. So uh, in addition to, uh, this, is, this is just referred to as America, but I mean, it's very clearly the Wild West specifically. Um, we've also got other, uh, other geographies to explore, which we'll be having a look at. That's the time bomb there, which has been reimagined as a stick of dynamite. Um, now, if we head up over here, um, there we go, there's <laughs> the bad guy has become um, um, some sort of robber. Now we're gonna go to the Arctic. That's uh, the next of the themed uh, sort of chunks of Around the World in 40 Screens. And now we're in a, a very, an Arctic sort of theme here. Avoid the thin ice, obviously, and collect fish. Uh, you've also got snowmen instead of boulders, which is great fun. Um, and you've also got the abominable snowman. Um, I'm not quite sure whether he should really be in the Arctic. I say that, it might actually be a polar bear. I mean, it's not quite clear whether it's meant to be a polar bear or a um, abominable snowman. Possibly it is meant to be a polar bear, given that this is the Arctic after all. I don't think that the Abominable Snowman lives in the Arctic. Hopefully we'll get to see him in a minute. Um, yes, I think he comes out. Yeah, there he is. <laughs> yeah, that's the polar bear, isn't it? You can squash him with uh, with a snowman. Not sure that that would actually uh, take out a polar bear in, in reality, but uh, there we go. That's the, uh, the art of imagination. Now you pick up the ice picks uh, and that un uncovers more fish. Um, so this is starting to get a little bit sneaky because you don't necessarily know in the same way that you do with safes uh, which of these squares are actually locked fish um, because they have the same square as, uh, as, as ordinary ice. So there you go. But uh, yes, that's, that was the Arctic. Now we'll go uh, head over to the Orient. And here, uh, instead of um, burgers now, uh, we're collecting bowls of noodles. Repton's got a rather uh, nice looking karate outfit. Need to avoid those dragons, um, they kill you. Uh, also, the uh, the boulders have now become Ming vases, which <laughs> is rather nice. Um, and uh, they are just as deadly. Uh, if you have a Ming vase fall on your head, um, you're not long for this world. But yeah, I mean, as you can see, um, well, there you go, amply demonstrated. Um, the creativity of this is just just fantastic. Um, now, Oceans is probably my favorite of these. Uh, I think it's really creative. Uh, because here uh, we're, we're basically underwater now, so to speak. We're in a diving suit. Um, you've got various types of clams. The ones that have got a pearl are uh, oysters, clams, I'm not quite sure which. Uh, the ones with a pearl in them you should collect, but the ones that don't you need to avoid because they'll kill you. Um, and then you need to watch out for the uh, the octopus, <laughs> the scary octopus who comes out of, uh, out of that crate there um, and uh, chases you around. Obviously, you can squish him in the same way that you would in any other Repton game, but you need to squish him with one of these ship's wheels, which I have failed to do. And then the final uh, geographic theme is Africa here. Um, and uh, this one's probably not... I don't, I don't particularly like this one so much. Um, it's, it's okay, but uh, I don't think it's... Uh, I don't think it's as creative as some of the other ones, and um, not not entirely comfortable with the fact that he's now just wearing a pair of speedos. I think it, I think they've gone for some sort of Tarzan um, uh, attempt here, which I I'm not quite sure. I think I'm not sure if it works, but uh, I mean there's some nice touches to it. I quite like the snakes there, and uh, yeah, you need to avoid the snakes, which I totally haven't done. So next we turn to the Life of Repton, which is probably my favourite of the themed Reptons that came out after Repton 3. 
Um, in Life of Repton, you basically get to play the various phases of Repton's life, uh, starting from uh, him as a baby, as you can see here, where he has to collect teddy bears and avoid uh, the uh, falling Humpty Dumpties. Um, there's also a dog, I think, that pops out of a box if you're not careful. Uh, so this is quite a nice little theme here. Um, this is the sort of more gentle level, uh, just to ease you in. Uh, as a baby, you've also got to avoid the fireplaces. You then move on to Repton at school. Um, so here he's basically picking up lots of sweets, trying to get into the tuck shop, and ideally avoiding the teacher, who um, if, uh, if he gets into contact with, he dies. Then we move on to Repton the teenage years, where I think he's trying to possibly get a girlfriend there. Uh, he has to collect telephones and um, I think they're LPs. And if he manages to get hold of a leather jacket, he's able to get into a nightclub. Then we have Repton at work. Um, this is Repton in the sort of prime of his life, basically collecting money and avoiding filing cabinets by uh, by the looks of it, and uh, topping up on coffee wherever he can. Death by filing cabinet. And then finally we have Repton the coffin dodger. Um, he hasn't managed to dodge it there. There you go. Life of Repton. Great fun. Now we have Repton through time. Uh, this is one of the more creative uh, ideas, uh, they do some nice touches here. So you start off in the prehistoric era, collecting grapes and squishing dinosaur eggs and, and trying to avoid the red grapes as well. Uh, then you move on to Repton in ancient Egypt, uh, squishing snakes and picking up papyrus scrolls uh, and statues of various Egyptian gods. Then we move on to the Victorian era, with uh, Repton as a, some, sort of, some sort of Victorian worker in a, in, a, in a station, a railway station, I think. Um, and then we go through the, what is supposed to be the present day, which is a slightly manic um, episode involving cans of coke and flying newspapers, avoiding guns. And finally we go to Repton in the future, um, where he's in some kind of space age, trying to avoid the UFOs and uh, picking up the diamonds. Um, there's also some Daleks here, which is uh, an interesting uh, little feature. And finally, in our Repton story, we reach Repton Infinity. Now. I have to say that this was a little bit of a disappointment for me. Um, it's clearly a very clever game, but by comparison to all of the previous instalments, it's really slow. Um, I think what they've tried to do here is allow for a lot more activity on screen, but as a trade-off, they've had to basically slow down uh, the graphics of all of the various sprites. And uh, unfortunately, it's a sh I, I really do think it's a shame because there's there's a lot here to enjoy, and in terms of the actual complexity and the various game mechanics, there is actually a lot to enjoy about Repton Infinity. But it is hard when you when you've become used to the the speed and sort of smoothness, albeit with a little bit of flickering um, in the earlier Repton installments. It somehow feels like a slightly backward step that it's this slow, um, and it, it it does take away a certain amount of the enjoyment. Now they did also try to be very creative with Repton Infinity, and we've actually got um, episodes within Repton Infinity featuring completely different sprites and completely different characters. This is Robo here, um, who is some kind of space age robot. Um, I mean, the, the animations are very nice, albeit still quite slow, but they're they're very cute. Uh, and in addition to uh, Robo, um, we've also got uh, something called Tracker, which sees you um, basically driving some kind of tractor around, squishing tomatoes, and avoiding some rather peculiar enemies, including that floating eyeball up there. Um, there's some corn as well. Corn or a banana? I think it's corn. But yes, um, definitely some uh, top marks here for creativity, but as I say, Repton Infinity, it just doesn't quite do it for me. Which is why I think it's only fair that we round out this uh, video review for this third entry in the Top 85 Games Countdown by returning to Repton 3 and playing through the first of the maps of the Takata section. Because, as I said earlier in the video, and in fact as I mentioned in the introduction, Repton 3 really is, for me, the pinnacle of the Repton series. And whilst there is a huge amount to enjoy and explore in all of the various um, episodes of Repton that came afterwards, Really, this is taking it back to the original spirit of the game, and really, I think that's what what counts. Um, there's something very, very special about the original Repton, um, and as I as I say, well, by the time we reach Repton Three, I think it gets as good as it can be. Um, of course, there's lots that you can do with the editor, and Matthew Atkinson, in particular, should be commended for all of the different creative ideas that he came up with for 
life through Repton around the world and, and all, all the rest. Um, as well as Repton Infinity, which, as I say, I would like to like. I would like to like it more. Um, unfortunately, as I say, the the sluggishness of it does detract quite a bit for me personally. But taking it back to Repton Three, um, this has all of the best mechanics put together. I think it works and it flows really well. The inter- the the level designs are really clever, and it's a game that you can just really enjoy. As I said in the introduction, one of the sort of keys to success with uh, with with all of the Repton games really is that is that there's the level of calm that there is. It's not a reflex game. It's not a game that tests how quickly you can do things or how well you can react. It's a puzzle solving game, and the puzzles are really at the heart of what makes the Repton games so much fun. Um, and you can revisit level after level, and you can really play them over and over again to try and work out the very best path. Uh, to get through each level um, in the minimum amount of time, and obviously, <laughs> ideally, avoiding um, the minimum. Oh, sorry, uh, achieving a minimum number of deaths. But for, as I say, for me, this is where it, this is where it's at. This is why I brought the game in at number three because I think that Repton Three really demonstrates just how great um, Repton is as a game um, and as a character. He really is the BBC Micro's mascot, and. I, I think you can probably see why I like him so much, and I, and he's got a huge amount of love. I mean, it's not just me. I know that people who had BBC Micros back in the day, those who still have them today, I think most of them would recognise that Repton is really the, the sort of pinnacle of game characters for, for the Beeb. There are lots of games for the BBC Micro, lots of great games with, with their own mechanics and their own storylines and um, artefacts, but Repton, Repton is the king. And um, that's why I've brought in Repton, the whole series, at number three. So there we have it. The Repton series takes the number three spot. But that still leaves two slots remaining. So who's it going to be? Which game is going to make it into entry number two and the all-important entry number one? Well, the premiere for this one has just gone live. I hope you've enjoyed it. And the premiere for the next one in the series will be coming online very soon. And I hope you'll join me then. And until then, goodbye.